All right, our next guest speaker is Hong Wong. He's worked in the high-tech industry for 31 years and recently moved into semi-retirement and supporting nonprofit organizations and volunteering works. Uh, he's formed startups, worked in small and multinational companies. Before becoming an engineer, he was trained to be a merchant marine navigator and has obtained his chief officer first mate license before his career changed to engineering. In the past 10 years, he's worked as a chief systems architect, principal engineer, and other senior, senior management positions, mostly focusing on innovative product designs. He's filed for more than 100 patents, is working on another one in his semi-retirement, and hoping to gather a team to drive this new idea into another startup. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. Uh, thank you for spending the next 25 minutes sitting here and listening to me. And uh, even though today is a tech talk, but I'm not talking much about technology, rather than I try to share my past experience, how I became an engineer. And it wasn't straightforward. Uh, Let's see, it go? No, it doesn't go. Oh, it works now. Uh, I don't need to go into introduction, I was being introduced. So I jump to next. Now, my early ch childhood, I, I was born in Hong Kong, so me in China, you can call it. And uh, my early childhood wasn't, was a little bit unusual. I very different from yours. As I came from a very poor family. Uh, give you some references. Uh, when I get a bowl of rice, sometimes I pour ketchup on top just to give give it some kind of taste. So is how poor my family was. So uh, my parents, like many Asian parents, they try to push this the, the children to study hard. Uh, so get a better education and then have a better life. But I, I have another thinking at the time. So as a kid, I like, just like the last guest speaker, I like to think of, uh, tinker a, a lot. And I didn't have money to buy toys. I lived in the countryside, so I can chop down bamboo and make toy guns and do all kinds of uh, fun things, make planes. And uh, the lucky thing was, my brother, he learned to be a radio operator that is doing Morse code. And he left. He joined the fishing fleet and be a radio operator. And he left behind a pile of junk. Now, you're talking about 60s. Early 60s, radio is still a big thing. Even though today you still listen to radio through internet. Uh, I didn't have money to buy a radio, so obviously I couldn't build one. <laughs> but I was only about fourth grade at the time when I built this. Now I didn't know about why you have to turn whining and do a tuning circuit. I know nothing about it, but I can look at the illustration and put things together and sound come out from the other end. So I was happy. And I also start running around trying to look for those junk components, someone flow into the garbage and torn them apart and do different things. So by the time I was on the sixth grade, I wrote it in my journal, I want to be an engineer. I didn't know what that mean. Uh, is it taking things apart, putting them back together, or do something else? I don't know. Is it a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, chemical engineer? I, I don't know. But it, it was my goal. And then uh, as I move into, uh, in, your, in America, it is a secondary. I don't remember how you call it. It's a seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. So anyway, I, I start tutoring my friend's kids. Uh, they were one grade below me. Just I helped them to finish their homework. And so I got paid. With the money, I start building more for the amplifier. Now again, it was still 60s. There wasn't any transistor at the time. <coughs> so don't talk about integrated circuitries. Anyway, uh, at around age 13, it was the first time I get a shock by the electric, uh, electricity. 
So my, my brother was touching one of the high voltage, 250 volt DC, which was lucky, right? And he, he was, his body was hot. I was sitting next to him trying to tinker the other part of the circuitry. My elbow bumped onto him, I was grounded. So I got the first shock, uh, but it was a DC. And uh, as I go further, I start building some other uh, transmitters. Now, all these things were illegal in, in Hong Kong. But then, as far as you don't jam the radio traffic, you don't jam the airport, you don't jam the police station, they just ignore it. So I even put antennas outside my apartment. And uh, it took me three years to make one really working because I, don't, I didn't know enough about the electricity, the picking a wrong capacitor, it turned out to be. Anyway, now, step back. Talk about all the, my, my desire to be an engineer versus what the environment allow me to do. So this is a, Now, this is the education system in Hong Kong at that time. There was a big change in 2012, but anyway. Now, when I was, when I was at ninth grade, so I, I study, they, they teach us science between seventh, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, and then we sit together and do examination. Nowadays, collaboration is a big deal. Everyone collaborate, right? You collaborate? Now, uh, I did very intensive collaboration. That was during the examination to you, you guys. That means cheating, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, my friend, my, my good friend, he sat next to me. He, he didn't know how to answer how an electrical, electric bell works. So I showed him the doorbell works this way. So he copied the paper. Fine. And uh, now, Again, cheating doesn't turn out to be good for me. He passed the exam, I flung the exam. <laughs> yeah, I, I did very good with electrical portion, but the other science pieces, I, I don't even know what's key me this principle. Anyway, I flung the exam. The outcome was uh, very different. Now, it's an education system issue. If I were in US, I don't have that issue. Because in US, you guys are lucky. You can change your career, change your topic of interest to study any time during your career. But in a British system, it is only the elite top, maybe 5% of students can really uh, get into the, the university. And then uh, usually you don't get to study what you want to study. Your examination in the early day already determined what you can study. So I was classified to be, hey, I, I probably be good at studying literature, history. Now, one thing is, many of you probably better than me. I was just an average student, sometimes even below average. I, I was pushed into study history, uh, but, but one thing, good thing about that particular school, I can still study chemistry, I can still study math, but I cannot study physics which is a, a gating item for me to move forward to be an engineer. Now, anyway, I set to to study history for, for the next two years. And then on the 11th grade, I took the open examination. Now, the open examination is maybe something like a GED or GLD or something similar. And uh, depends on how many subjects you take. So it usually between one to two weeks of examination, every day you have a three hour of, of examination on a to particular topics. So it is easily one to two weeks examination. Now, I, I took the examination, I got, again, very average grade, right? Don't expect I do any better. And, uh, but still, it's all focused on art and liberal art kind of topics. Then the question is, I didn't do good enough. Uh, I, I have to change to another school because uh, my, 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 the school I study in, I wasn't good enough to even to continue my education in my previous school. I have to go and find another uh, 
school of less, less, uh, less demanding. I, anyway, I moved to the 12th grade and another school. Now, my mind was, I want to study physics so that I can be an engineer. And I went to another school. In the admissions form, I feel in the admissions form, I walk up to the counter. There was a teacher there, look at my past history of my score in the examination. And then he said, oh, you are good enough to continue your education in liberal arts. I said, okay. Then he signed the paper, I the admission form, turned around the corner and gave to the registration. While I turned the corner, I saw the teacher, the first teacher, look at my paperwork. He said, you are art student. So he put a check mark on one. Then I walk over to the registration. I turn around and check the other check marks too. <laughs> now, you can, even though today I'm debating whether I did the right thing or not, right? Because it's a forgery, <laughs> if you look at it deeper. But at that time, what the heck, right? I have nothing to do because I was a young kid. You can put me in jail. But I know the worst part is the school will just put me back to studies literature. So what, right? And uh, I, I'm not promoting this kind of practice, <laughs> personally. But I'm trying to promote that I have uh, my goal set in the early age. I want to get to where I was. Now, I wasn't premeditated to do this either. It was just maybe some force from the heaven tell me how to do something like this. I don't know. And uh, anyway, I returned and studied 12th grade. Now, the reason why I need to change is because if I go and take the open examination, I cannot submit my application to take, take the examination myself. It has to be regulated by the school. The school will submit the uh, examination request to the board of uh, examination office, whatever. And uh, in order for me to take any science topics in the open examination, it has to go through the school. Now, I achieved the first step in my 12th grade. But then the, the big question mark is, I haven't been studying physics for that many years. If I pick it up again at 12th grade, what can I do? Because they are teaching the AP level classes at 12th grade. I didn't even have an ordinary level of uh, understanding of physics, other than electricity, maybe. So what can I do? So I have one year. I'm given a chance to, to take the open examination in science topics. But I have no background. What can I do, right? And uh, I will be happy just taking not the AP level exam. I just take an ordinary level exam so that I can at least show someone, hey, I know science. So that's one way to study. <coughs> Your teacher probably will have to show you how. Yes, go and look up for the past 10 years open examination. What kind of examine, what kind of test paper questions they ask? You don't need to study the peers the recent two years. So there's eight years of old examination paper. If I learn the answers to all those eight years of examinations, probably I may be lucky enough to hit the jackpot. So that year I basically focus on looking at the past test papers come up with answers, and then got some guidance from my brother. And we pick questions. So by the end of 12th grade, I, I went out and took the, to, to take the open examination again. I scored all A's. So I was just an average student. But I, I just learned how to study better. And uh, now. It works at, the, at this level, but as you advance going through the graduate school, it doesn't work. Okay, so it, it doesn't, this is not golden rule, but it is just some way to work around it. Anyway, now, 
I scored eight. So, but I still not good enough to go into a four-year college because I didn't do good again in the college. There's another examination. Anyway, I stopped at 12th grade. With that examination paper, then I can uh, examination result. Then I, I was able to go into Hong Kong Polytech. Now my brother, he was a he was a radio operator later, he become, became a navigator. He told me, Paul, oh, if you really want to study the things you want, you can go overseas. Many college universities are out there. But then you don't have money. Why don't you go and be a navigator, make some quick money? With money, you can decide what you want to do. So I went to Merchant Marine School and studied navigation, uh, doing all this stuff. And the life is really tough. Not just the weather, but also have to manage the crew. Uh, sometimes they, they fight against each other, they take drugs. Now, one thing you don't want to do in your life is don't take drugs. Your life will be ruined. And uh, I, I have to deal with uh, all kinds of people. And anyway, I, I did pretty good as a navigator. And by 79, I got my chief officer license. Now, it opened up another door for me. I, I can be a, I don't have to go to sea anymore if I want to. I can, in the, in the, uh, in the contain, container terminal, I can be a cargo planner. Or I can drive a hydrofoil, which would be fun. Or I can be uh, learning how to manage the harbor. Those are a pretty good job. But then I looked at my dream again. Hey, I want to be an engineer. What can I do? Now I have money in my pocket. At that time, the pay was, uh, you're talking about 79. The pay was pretty good. Uh, I still remember I get $2,500 per month. Now, I don't have to pay for room and board. I don't have to pay for buying a car. I don't, because all those covered by, I don't have to buy food. All, all those covered by the company. So with the money I saved, I said, hmm, let me start all over, come to US. So I decided to return to college. Uh, now, again, I have been lagging for, a few, for quite a few years studying. And uh, I, I, at that point, I really don't have that much confidence about, am I good, able to catch up with the college uh, studies, or is my math, I, if I still remember the math, honestly, I didn't. I didn't remember calculus, pre-calculus. So I basically came to US, start, start over. But one thing I learned is, I learned how to study as I grew older, and I learned how to take examination better. So I, I went to a junior college in Centralia. Now, I, I look at many things in my life as my personal goal, not something to brag about. I, I've been pushing myself. Let's see how many credits I can take in a college. I start, started off with 17. I think the next was 22, and 24, 28, 32. By the last quarter I left the junior college, I don't remember whether I was on 34, 35 or 36 credits. But I remember I dropped one credit because that requires me to be there all the time. That was roller skating. I even tried to learn roller skating. And uh, I, I couldn't attend all the, all the sessions, so in, in that case I dropped the class. Now, it, it was just a personal challenge. I, I did pretty good in the junior college. And uh, I get 3.72 when I get out from the junior college. I only, I only get B's in business administration classes. But anyway, uh, even though today I'm a kind of semi-retired, I'm still challenging myself. I, I still work more than 40 hours a week, uh, doing many non-profit non work. Anyway, now. And I, I come across kids at your age, and uh, they're always thinking, hey, what major should I, should I pick? Uh, but, but one thing is, hey, by the end of the day, you have choices. 
do you want to be the one sitting, uh, sitting by the freeway ramp on ramp, holding a sign, asking for help, or do you want to be the one giving help to that person? Right? I'd rather be the one giving help to others. So you, you want to think about something, set your goal, and then the other thing is you're trying to see how you can get there. The other one is, am I smart enough to finish the degree? I, I would say in US, if you don't think you can do it, go and take a lower level classes, build up your confidence, you will get there. No doubt you will get there. It's more on your personal determination rather than whether your capability. Now, do I have enough money? Honestly, I use up my savings in the first two years in the US. One reason was I pulled my brother in, in Hong Kong, came to the US to study with me, and up the money I have was split, being used by both of us. So from junior all the way to through my graduate school, I work more than 40 hours a week. Now, I, I still able to keep my GPA to 3.5 and 3.6 in the graduate school. Now, let's say if I don't work, will my GPA go higher? Probably not, because my intellectual level is at this level. Here, I have friends, they score four points. I was a TA, I can grade some of the students' paper. They are way ahead of the batch. I have just a majority, somewhere in the middle. And if I were given more time to study, I probably would not improve my grade any further, just because I don't have that level of intelligence, smartness to get there. But it doesn't matter. If I look back at myself, am I happy with my life? Definitely, I'm very happy with what I am, uh, at the level of achievement I have, exceeding my expectation. The other one is, uh, should I go to a big name school? I, I was in a big name school in Hong Kong. Uh, when I came to the US, I picked a junior college, just like community, community college here. I think it's good enough for me. And actually, I, I found out that the best teachers I have come across in my life, they were in the community college. They were really dedicated to teach me, and uh, they were always available. It, they were one of the best uh, teachers I came across. But when you go to a bigger school, end up you are talking to TAs all the time. They are less experienced teachers. Uh, And uh, let's see. Now, what am I doing today? Now, I am a kind of semi-retired uh, from Intel, uh, and I I'm still keeping up today on the new technologies. I'm still learning something new. Uh, I never been into IT. I'm learning how to manage IT. I used to be design innovative products, and at the other time. At, at the same time, I'm trying to help the nonprofit organizations how to apply technology to make their business more efficient, more productive, and trying to give back to the society. Um, as someday you'll pick your career, pick something you enjoy doing. I'm not trying to promote engineering or computer science. I'm more important is pick, pick a topic that is good for you, that you will enjoy doing, Actually, I start a few minutes late, so it's okay. I still may have two minutes. Uh, you have to keep learning. Uh, even though, let's say, if I, if I were flipping hamburger in Burger King, that's fine. Then my mind may be just thinking, how can I flip this hamburger more efficiently? Or how to get the production line more effective? So think about it. You want to be moving up. Rather than today I'm flipping hamburger, tomorrow I may be managing this place. In five years, I may be managing a franchise. What does that mean? You have to learn how to run a business. Maybe you should pick up business administration or similar topics. So one thing is you enjoy what you are doing. That's the uh, number one criteria, to be happy, to make yourself being contributing to the society, and of course, think positive. Anyway. Uh, my time is out, 
and uh, Q and A. Any Good. We don't talk about money here. <laughs> By the way, Andy Ning's pay is really good. It's true. Uh, someone asked how much people got, got paid. How much you pay? I, I cannot tell you, but I can tell you uh, now. Uh, as a senior management in a start, startup company, I, I did startup, uh, you get over $200,000. But Intel, Microsoft pay you more than that. So if there's a motivation. But I think getting money is still minor. How you use the money you get, pay back to the society is a lot more important than making money because there's no end. How much money? Build gaming a lot too. Oh, Thank you. what's the thing that's on your belt? Uh, what's the thing on my belt? Oh, just recording. I, I like to get some feedback on my voice uh, so I can keep on improving myself. Yeah. I, I'm thinking about improvement all the time. Nice. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much.